What's going on, everybody? First of all, I want to begin by wishing you a happy new year. God has graced us to move from 23 to 24, and I'm excited about it. We have declared that this year is the year of connections. We're going to connect with God, others, and purpose. We just finished a dynamic service that we talked from the subject title, or for the opposition. We know that 2024 won't be without obstacles, but God has given us the grace to overcome. I want to encourage you to check out this service and let us know how you feel about it, how it's blessed you, and please share it with somebody else. Listen, I look forward to talking to you soon. And again, Happy New Year. Attention to 2 Samuel chapter 1, verse 21. 2 Samuel chapter 1. Verse 21, I'm going to read from the voice translation. It reads like this, mountains of Jeboa, let no rain or dew water you. May your mountain fields offer only dust. The shield of the Almighty was defiled with your enemy's blood. Even the shield of Saul is no longer anointed with oil by the eternal. I want to take a few moments just to talk from the subject title as we begin opening this resistance and strength series. Oil for the opposition. Oil for the opposition. Everybody say that with me. Say oil, oil. for the opposition. Yeah, I think it's important that we understand what oil is designed for. I want to submit this to you. Just because you're oily does not mean you will be exempt from opposition. In fact, it's the oil on your life that attracts the opposition. So this season, we can expect resistance even when we're in the will of God. Resistance is designed to produce strength in you, stamina, and endurance. There is no maturation without resistance. And so as we look at this text, we understand that Saul is Israel's first king. He was anointed he was chosen by the people for the people. Saul had a love affair with the people. And in fact, he was more committed to pleasing the people than he was pleasing God. And as a result, the kingdom was stripped from him. And so Saul began to be vexed by evil spirits that would come upon him since the Spirit of God had departed. Because when God departs your life, it opens yourself up to things that you normally would be able to avoid. The thing that made Saul significant was the anointing that was on his life. And when I say anointing, I mean the full support of Almighty God. Amen. Like, the anointing does not require oil, but the anointing does require God's presence. Amen. Because if you have oil without his presence, you'll just be greasy. And oil is so necessary for our lives. As I look back over my life... Uh, I got married a couple of months ago, a year and some change. And the reality of it is, I remember putting on my wedding ring for the first time, and I got it size. And it was nice putting it on, but when I tried to take it off, I realized that it was smaller than what I had anticipated. And I remember getting frustrated because I was excited about getting in the ring, but I don't like wearing my ring 24-7, especially when I'm sleeping. So I was trying to pull it off. And my mom looked at me. She said, behave. 
She said, it's going to be okay. She said, all you got to do when you get home is just lotion your hands. Because if you lotion your hands, what seem to be stuck and what you seem to be stuck in, you'll be able to escape. That's why in this season, you need somebody who's familiar with oil in your life that knows the power of oil because oil will give you the ability to slip out of things that normal people will remain stuck in. This is why you should take a break just to give God glory because you're a living testimony of God's faithfulness. Some of your other friends are six feet under, but God let you get away because of the oil that was on your life. If you know that you have oil, give God some glory right now. And so oil is necessary. And I want you to know this, that this text is Saul's last battle. I want you to understand this, that in warfare, we need a shield. And the Bible tells us in Ephesians that shield can be compared to faith. And in war times, the shield was necessary. In fact, a polished shield had the ability to reflect light from the sun and blind the enemy. It said polished shield, or shield that had oil. Shields also served as doors because they protected the men and they discerned what was appropriate to come in and what should remain outside. They created walls with shields. And so the enemy is afraid when you have a shiny shield that's been with oil because it blinds them. And so I believe in this season the believers are going to shine like they've never shined before because of the oil that's upon their life. I want to submit this to you that you know you need oil when you're losing in places that you normally win. And so I want to talk for a few moments because oil does a few things. First of all, oil, the anointing brings deliverance. Everybody say deliverance. deliverance. Yes, Saul wins five battles to be exact. And Saul gets strategic with the sixth battle. Excuse me, the fifth battle, because the fifth battle, he doesn't even win that out front. Saul realizes that he no longer has the anointing. So what he does is he positions a young lad by the name of David to go and fight on his behalf because he knows it's not about the spear, it's not about the shield, it's not about the shoes, it's about the presence of God. And this is why David says, I'm not going in Saul's armor because if the armor alone was the answer, Saul would have gone. But there must be something wrong with Saul's armor. Why does he think it's going to work for me? He doesn't even believe it's going to work for him. You got to be careful when people put stuff on you that's not even working for them. This is why I am very careful about the way I preach because some people preach theoretically, but it does not work in their life. You only can impart what you've experienced. And so, an anointing uh, that can't be tested can't be trusted. So I want to tell you that the anointing brings deliverance. It was David who brought deliverance in the fifth battle against Goliath. And this is why the ladies were in love with David because they recognized the anointing that was upon his life. In fact, Saul killed his thousands, but David is known for killing his ten thousands because it's something about an anointed individual um, that it separates you from the rest. The anointing, number two, is also a defense. It's a defense, the anointing. It's a defense. The, the anointing on my life opposes the enemy. Now watch this. The shield is in place, but the shield without the oil for Saul does not work. The, the shield represents the gift, but the gift without the oil, it won't work. Because 
The anointing protects. In fact, when you look at the sheep and the shepherd, the reason he anoints his head is because there's some parasites that try to attach itself to the sheep. And he puts it in the wool because the oil operates as a repellent. And this, this is why you just can't practice Christian tactics and not have the Christian oil. Because the Christian oil is what protects you. Can I submit this to you? One of the reasons you didn't lose your mind is because of the oil on your life. The reason you didn't lose your family, because you don't just have an ordinary family, you've got an anointed family. And I believe that we have to grow in our respect for the anointing, because the anointing will defend you even when you feel defenseless. Have you looked back over your life and seen all the attempts the enemy has tried on you? He's tried everything on you. He stole everything, including the kitchen sink on you. But the truth of the matter is somehow God has sustained you because what the enemy knows is that you're anointed. And he'll always attack the anointed. But here's the caveat. He'll never win. I need you to prophesy to yourself that the enemy may attack me, but he'll never win. That's how I didn't say it like they mean. I need to talk to y'all. I said, the enemy may attack me, but he'll never win because I'm anointed. Isn't the enemy crazy to pick fights with people he know he can't defeat? So I came in to tell you that the anointing is a defense. They lied on you, but the lies didn't stick because you were anointed. They threw you in the pit, but you got out of the pit because you're anointed. They put you in the lion's den. The lions were hungry, but they couldn't eat you because of the anointing on your life. You got to learn how to respect the anointing of God that's placed upon your life. In order to have the anointing, something had to be crushed to produce it. Yeah, This is why my mom. My dad, before I would go to school every day, they would put the anointing oil on my head. That's why I wonder, that's why when I went to hook up with people, they wouldn't hook up with me because the anointing is a repellent. Can I prophesy to a single sister? The reason you're single is not because you're not attractive. The reason you're single is because the anointing repels men that mean you no good. Some of you got to thank God for the anointing on your life. Counterfeits can pose as the real thing when you have the anointing because you're able to discern the difference when you know that you're anointed. There's some parties you won't be invited to when you're anointed. Ask David. That's a price for the anointing. That's a price you'll pay with it. And I came here to tell you that the anointing is the greatest blocker you ever have in your life. You wonder why you can't get away with stuff that other people get away with? It's because of the anointing on your life. God really has his hand on you. He's not playing with you. He don't play about you. That's why everybody else can get away and you'll be the one that gets the charge so God can turn your life around because God is trying to communicate something to you that the anointing will make the difference. Look at somebody say the anointing makes the difference. It's a defense and it makes the difference. Defends you from the things you want to be defended from. And sometimes the things you don't want to be defended. He has to respect the anointing, but it makes the difference. That's the next point. The anointing makes the difference. Everybody say the anointing makes the difference. Yeah, that's why you don't really want to be in a community of people who don't respect nor have. The anointing. anointing is always connected to your assignment, but it always makes the difference. This is what Saul understands when he's in battle. He's experienced victory, but because he has a shield that does not have oil, this time he loses the battle. Because the anointing makes the difference between defeat and victory. Between you being the victim and you being the victor. The anointing. Makes the difference. 
This is why you should always do an anointing check. Because the anointing makes the difference. When Saul got a fellowship with God, he lost his anointing. And what he was able to defeat prior, he was no longer able to defeat because he didn't have the anointing. He shook himself and didn't feel the presence of God. I told you, the anointing is more than just oil. You can be greasy and not be oily. It makes the difference. It makes the difference. You know, I have some clippers. I have, they, they call them T-liners. They, they, they line up your beard, your mustache. Brothers and some sisters talk back to me. I'm not going to leave you out this time. Brothers and some sisters. You got a T-liner at the crib. <laughs> Just keep looking at me and, I, and we won't know who I'm talking about. Look, but, but I, I, I've got a T-liner, you know, and, 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 you know, every now and then I try to edge myself up, try to clean up my face or my head. And during the pandemic, that was really big. Everybody was their own personal barber. You know, some of us jacked ourselves up and, and God redeemed us. But one thing you will understand about clippers is that every now and then you start your clippers running and you'll go to shave your face or to edge yourself up. And you realize that the blade is really not removing any hairs. And you wonder what the problem is because you didn't read the manual. And you're ready to throw away your clippers because you feel like they don't work. Watch this. They're connected to power. But they're still not working. They're making a sound. But they're still not working. But if you really looked in the box, you, you'll see this little tube. A lubricant, oil, that if you put a little bit of oil, you'll find that the clippers you thought were broken actually work. And I came here to prophesy to somebody that if you have a little bit of oil, the little bit of oil will make all the difference in the world. I came here to prophesy to somebody that says my gift alone won't cut it. See that? My gift alone won't cut it. But if you put some oil on my gift, I'm able to destroy anything that's in my way. Because the anointing destroys the yoke and sets the captive free. If you know you need the oil, I need you to shout. I need to preach this thing. Some of y'all acting like your ability will cut it. You acting like your intellect will cut it. But I've come to the conclusion that the only thing I need is the anointing. Because the anointing will make a difference if you apply it to your situation. The reason you're going to get the job is not because you have all those years under your belt. It's because you're anointed. The reason your children are going to conform is not because you've always told them the right thing. It's because you're anointed. The the reason your business is going to prosper is not because you read all the books and the catalogs, it's because you're anointed. If you know that you're anointed and the anointing makes the difference for the third time, I need you to give God some praise. Why don't you high five and somebody say, I've got the oil, I got the oil, I got the oil. All you need is a little bit of oil, and a little bit of oil can make a big difference. That's why I came to church today. I need God to grease me. I need God to put his oil on me. I need God to anoint me afresh. I need the anointing. Just a little bit of oil. Just a little bit of oil. I'm just prophesying to everybody who did all you could in 2023 and it didn't seem to cut it. I came to tell you this year, 2024, you're going to enter with some oil. We could really just stop church right there. I said in 2024, you're about to enter the new year with some oil. I 
I hear prophetically that God's going to call some of you back to the same place. But this time you're going to get different results because you have oil. I came to prophesy to you that the anointing is going to make the difference in your life. If you're watching online, the anointing is going to make the difference in your life. Because just like my clippers, your efforts are not cutting it. You've toiled all night and caught nothing. You've been having problems dealing with the resistance. But when you invite Jesus into your boat... An empty boat can be made, be made full because of the anointing. The anointing is not just oil. That's symbolism of the anointing. The anointing is God's presence. Yeah. And his presence makes the difference. He was trying to send Moses ahead. Moses said, where are we going to go if you don't go with us? You know how I stutter when you're not with me. I don't have the ability to articulate when you're not with me. I need your presence. This is why I'm glad you came to church this Sunday morning. I thank God you got a new relationship. Thank God you in a relationship that's complicated. Appreciate that. But at the same time, if you don't make sure you enter this year with God, you'll find out that this year may be a repeat of last year. Because the anointing makes the difference. Let me get out of here and cut the chase. These, these are three places you got to understand the anointing should be used in. First of all, it should be used in dry places. Everybody say dry places. The anointing should be used in dry places. This is why it's hard for you to be anointed in dry. It's hard for you to go to an anointed community of believers and they be dry. Because the anointing is made for dry places. The reason Saul's shield cracks is because he was responsible for oiling his shield. But since he didn't oil his shield, he snapped. And when you don't oil your faith, snaps. Let's be honest. Some of us had our best year in 2023, and some of us snapped. And yeah, knuck if you buck. Uh, I mean, buck. Uh. Other way around. Yeah. Uh, um, the truth of the matter is, we snapped because we didn't have oil. Because oil protects the shields that were made out of leather, and Saul goes to battle. Without the oil. And when you go to the battle without the oil, your only option is defeat. And some of you are in a dry place right now. Your marriage is dry. Your finances are dry. You need some oil. You need the presence of God in your situation. Some of things are dried up. Because we lack oil. Secondly, the dark places. Dark places. You remember the story of the virgins? The virgins, five were foolish and five were wise. The ones that were wise had extra oil. I want to submit to you uh, that it's a bad decision for you to borrow in crisis what you could have bought prior. Because the reason the light was burning is because of the oil. This is where we get burning the midnight oil. Because light was the effect of being connected to oil. And you can't get through dark places in your life if you don't have oil. I came here to just remind some of you, you went through some of the darkest seasons you've ever been through. But 
God brought you out because of the oil that's on your life. You had a Psalms 23 experience that gave though I walked through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil because you are with me. I'm anointed to walk through dark situations. If you didn't know how your bills were going to get paid, but somehow God made a way. If you didn't know how you were going to put food on the table, but somehow God made a way. Then you've been through a dark season when you didn't know how you were going to pay your doctor's bills, but somehow God made a way. Then you know that you're anointed. Let me ask you a question. Did you get out of anything in 2023 that should have held you and you really can't explain it outside of the presence of God? If that's your testimony, you owe God a praise. Hallelujah. I was able to get through a dark situation because he's a light unto my path and a lamp unto my feet. I came here to tell you when you got oil, you can get through a dark situation. What gets darker than death? And Jesus goes to a cave. We call it a tomb. And he stays there for three days. But on the third day, he got it. That wasn't dark enough. While he was there, he went to hell and got the keys. Because when you're anointed, you can get through dark places. Ain't no sunshine when she's gone, but you can still get through. If you're anointed, I wish saints would stop thinking that every path God brings us through is always going to be well lit. When you're anointed, you get through things that other people get stuck in. Yeah, that's why some of you not bitter because the anointing won't let you stay stuck. You let them go because they didn't have the grace to hold you. Some people are looking at you now mad that you're still making it without them. But what they underestimated was the anointing that's on your life. They're like, how in the world can she still smile? I gave her 10 reasons to frown, but somehow she still got a smile on her face. How's she still going to church? I thought I was going to break her faith, and she's still going to church. How is he still walking with his chest stuck out and his head up after I tried to beat him down like he stole something? It's because of the anointing. Yeah, we've been through some dark places, and perhaps you're in a dark place right now, but you can get through the dark place with the anointing. Anointing. Yeah, go, can the bad doctor's report? That's a dark place. But when you understand you're anointed, I'm not even afraid of death because God can remove the sting from death. If death couldn't hold Jesus, what makes you think whatever you're going through can hold you? Christ is not his last name. Christ means anointed one. So Christ gets out of stuff that will hold other people. Because he's anointed. He walks through people that other people would have bumped into because he's anointed. And anointing is made for dark places because there's no light without oil. They threaten to lay all of you all off. And you're still optimistic because you have oil. Because you like Job, the Lord giveth, the Lord taketh away. But I'm going to wait until my appointed time. Because I know my change is coming. Because you have a supplier, this job, but I got a provider, God. And he supplies all my needs. And the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. I'm too anointed to go without food. If I went up without food, God will be my bread when I'm hungry. And my water when I'm thirsty because I'm anointed. When you're anointed, expect to come out of stuff that other people get stuck in. Even if it's dark. I 
I went through dark decades before. Reason in throwing the towel is what I recognize now is the anointing. Now I want to say this. Don't confuse anointing with your ability. Because sometimes you don't recognize the anointing because the anointing is not your ability. It's the ability of God operating in your life. Which tells me the enemy is not intimidated by your ability. He's intimidated by God and your ability. Because if God be for you, who can be against you? So dry places, dark places, depleted places. Depleted. Depleted places. Y'all hear me? Depleted places. Depleted. It was a widow. Came to a depleted place where she didn't have enough money to pay her bills. She didn't. The creditors were coming. She didn't have enough money to pay her bills. And you know what she said? I like talking to you on Gilda. She said, she said, I don't have nothing but a little jar. Oil. Uh-huh. I have nothing but oil. Uh-huh. That's all I have. Uh-huh. Not even a whole lot of oil, Sister Betty. A little bit of oil. It looks like it's over for me, and I'm telling the man of God all I have is some oil. I, I don't have any cards, don't have any connections, don't have a job, don't even have a man. All I have is a little bit of oil. And what the prophet knew is a little bit of oil has great possibilities. He said, what I want you to do, get you a little bit of oil. I want you to go borrow some jars with your little bit of oil. He said, and I want you to start pouring with your little bit of oil. And after she brought her jars, she began to pour her little bit of oil. And she realized she had more in the jar than she thought she had. So then she went to another jar and she poured some more oil. And that was full. Then she went to another jar and poured some more oil. And she kept on pouring and pouring and pouring and pouring and pouring and pouring and pouring pouring until she gets to the last jar. And when there's no longer a container, the oil stops. Watch this. This woman believes God so much and God ordered her steps so much that he gave her enough jars to get her out of debt. You mean to tell me a little oil can get me out of big debt? They didn't get it on this side. Let me talk to y'all. A little bit of oil that you won't even use is about to get you out of a big problem? Look at somebody say, I got a little bit of oil left. I got a little bit of oil left. I might not have all the oil I want, but a little bit of oil can make a big difference. This little bit of oil gets her out of debt. A little bit of oil. The devil is afraid of your little bit of oil. A little bit of oil you neglect. A little bit of oil you think has no value. That's the oil he's afraid of. Because that oil can bring multiplication to your life. When the opposition would say subtraction. See, I believe this. If God anointed me to sell cookies, I'm going to have the best cookie store. The best bakery in the city. Because I'm not just serving cookies. I'm serving anointed cookies. 
And I believe I can pay off my debt selling cookies. If I'm anointed to sell cookies. See, some of y'all go to work like you're not anointed for it. When you know you're anointed for it, then you know this might be my first step, but this is not my final stop. Because I'm anointed to be here. I know you tell me that it's going to take 10 years to move up the ladder, but you don't know I'm anointed. God will level the ladder and give me a level playing ground so that I can get to my destiny because I'm anointed. And all I need is a little bit of oil. A little bit of oil can move some big mountains. This is why we go to prayer. Because prayer invites his presence. And a little bit of oil will advance you more than a lot of studying. A little bit of oil, this is why we give God our Sabbath, will advance you more than a whole lot of planning. This woman was planning so much, she was planning to give up. And God said, let me interrupt your plans. Because you got something I can use. A little bit of oil. Have you identified the oil that's in your house? You about to give up everything you own because you can't identify the oil that's in your house. You know why I won't lose as long as his presence is with me? Because you'll never beat the anointing. Can I submit this to you? This is why I try to live according to God's plan and purposes. Because I know without the anointing, I can do nothing. Let me say this. God may not remove your gift, but he can remove the anointing. And when he removes the anointing, your gift is like everybody else's. So now you're back in the pool with all this competition because there's nothing to distinguish you because you, you don't have the oil. Yeah. There probably were other widows that the creditors came and got. But this woman didn't understand she was different because she had oil. This is why you should strive to live pure. Yeah. Oh, I thought this was a... Because you want to protect your oil. You don't want to sing and hit the key or the note and miss the chains. Because oil makes a difference. If I can communicate, I can communicate whether I live right or wrong. But my communication won't get the same results if I don't have the anointing. That's why some of y'all mad. I can talk just like him, but you don't say I have the same oil I have. I've been talking since I was two. Me too. But you don't have the same oil. Yeah, yeah. And that's why you got to protect your oil. Because your oil makes the difference, not your gift. So we go to spiritual gifts class and never go to an oil class. And we recognize that our gifts have limitations if there's no oil. I can teach too. Just give me a book. But if you don't have the oil, you're going to teach and no one will listen. You know why people are here on this morning? It's not because any of us are that gifted. It's the oil in this house. And we got to learn how to depend on the anointing. We celebrate gifts and can't recognize anointing. Anointing requires lifestyle. Y'all didn't see that coming the first Sunday of the year, did you? I said anointing requires lifestyle.
Let me get back to this story. You got to protect your oil. Keep the flies out of your oil. That's why you can't cheat on your taxes like other people in business. Because you know the reason you had surplus was because of the oil on your life. See, when you're doing, dealing with resistance, you need the best response, not the easiest. Let me get to this last point, then we're going to anoint you. This woman not only had enough oil to get out of her debt, the Bible says she had surplus. So she even had profit left over after she paid her debt. Can I say this to you? In this season, you're about to go into a place of overflow. Because of the oil. Because somebody said, I'm going to pay my bills and have some left over. No, I'm not going to live from paycheck to paycheck this year. I'm too oily to live from paycheck to paycheck. I'm believing God for the overflow. Now, if you think that's carnal, don't you believe God for that. But I'm going to believe God for myself. Because God's going to sustain me even in a drought because I'm oily. If you believe you're oily, why don't you stand up and give God some praise? As we worship our God. This message hit home because, you know, so many years I feel like I just kept coming up short. Kept coming up short. Kept coming up short. I'm a planner. I'm a preparer. Ask anybody that knows me. (laughs) I'm trying to be the most intentional person I can be. Because I believe that God blesses preparation. But even the preparation can't replace the anointing. It can't. And for some of you, before we move forward, I'm not going to even ask you to come to the front. I just want you to raise your hand where you are. On this first Sunday of the year, there's only one person that gives oil. And his name is Jesus Christ. Oil is not what we're about to put on your head. Anointing is not what we're about to put on your head. Anointing is the presence of God. And some of you have held God at a distance. And some of you have not protected the anointing. And when you shake yourself, you don't feel his presence anymore. And it's not that he left you because he said he'll never leave you nor forsake you, but sometimes we leave him. And on today, so this won't just be a religious ritual. You hear today, you say, Pastor, you know what? I think this is my Sunday to return home. I need his presence because life as it is is not cutting it. I need God's company. I need his power. I need his anointing. If that's you all over the sanctuary, wherever your head is bowed, every eye is closed, I want you to raise your hand in the air. I want to pray for you. I see that hand. 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 I see that hand in the balcony. See that hand in the balcony. Raise your hand high so I can see where you are. And more importantly, God can see where you are. I see those hands over. It's those little hands. Thank God he's speaking to our youth. I see those hands right there. This is a rededication to the Lord Jesus Christ. Because Paul says it's in him we live. We move and we have our being. I want you to repeat after me. Say, Father God, I realize that I'm a sinner. That I've fallen short of your standard for my life. But I'm so glad you sent your son Jesus to die for my sins. To forgive me. And to cleanse me from all unrighteousness. And right now, Father, I ask you to come live on the inside. To be my Lord. And to be my Savior. I declare that my life will never be the same from this day forward. In Jesus' name, amen and amen.